Amen. Somebody say, bless the Lord today. Oh, you can do better than that. I said, bless the Lord today. We serve a mighty God. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. It's so good and such a joy to be here with you today. I really, really am excited uh, to share the word of God with you. I really appreciate your pastor very much, uh, Pastor John Boston. He uh, called me and let me know, listen, man, I need you to help me out. And I told him, brother, anytime, anywhere. Amen. amen. You always got to be ready. Come on, say amen. amen. With a word on the inside. And so I just told him, man, I can do whatever you need me to do. He said, come on, preach for me, man. I said, yes, sir, we can do that. I love to preach. Anybody who knows me knows I love to preach the word of God uh, because God has been so good to me. I want to say a word of thanks to uh, those four young gentlemen who sang. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Touch the person next to you and tell them that's old school. That's old school. That's right. That's old school stuff. Come on, say amen. Yes, sir. That's that quartet. Y'all don't know nothing about this. Young folks, they don't know nothing about that. <laughs> but when we were growing up, I can say that now. <laughs> When we were growing up, that's all we had. Amen. Four brothers would be in the back of the church practicing all day, and they'd finally let us up there. And we couldn't wait to sing praises to the king. Come on, say amen. And I just lo I love acapella music. I just love it to death. And you guys are just amazing. I really appreciate it so much. So much. Absolutely. It just filled my soul. And... That last song, that last song you sang, Were It Not For Grace. <laughs> oh, you all don't even know where we're going. That's the reason why you're not shouting. Were It Not For Grace. It just so fits in alignment with where I'm going today because we're going to talk about grace this morning. Is that all right? Turn with me, if you will, in your Bibles to the book of Matthew. What book did I say? Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18, and we're going to start reading from verse number 23. Matthew chapter 18 and verse number 23, when you have it, say amen. amen. <clears throat> the word of God says, therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon... One was brought unto him, which ought him, which ought him 10,000 talents. How many talents, everybody? But for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold and his wife and children and all that he had and payment to be made. Verse 26, the servant therefore fell down and worshiped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee how much, everybody? All. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion, moved with what, everybody? And loosed him, and loosed him, and loosed him, and forgave him the debt. But the same servant... There's always a but. But the same servant, which servant, everybody? Went out and found one of his fellow servants, which ought him a hundred pence. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, pay me that which thou owest. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee how much, everybody? All. Oh, and he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what, he, what was done, they were very sorry and came and told unto their Lord all that was done. 
then his Lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt because thou desiredest me. Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not everyone his brother their trespassers. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Today I want to talk to you from the subject, Reproducing the King. Reproducing the King. Let's bow our heads. Father God, I thank you for the opportunity. Now bless it in Jesus' name. Amen. Reproducing the King. I want to quote a quote here from Christ Object Lessons, page 69. Servant of the Lord says, Christ is waiting with longing desire for the manifestation of himself in his church. When the character of Christ shall be perfectly reproduced in his people, then he will come to claim them as his own. When the character of Christ shall have per been perfectly reproduced in his people, then he will come to claim him or them as his own. What I want you to know today, if you don't understand anything else from this sermon, I want you to know one thing. God is in the reproduction business. God is in the reproducing business. He's about reproducing himself in you and in me. Can you say amen? God is not in the making you better business. God is not in the building you up business. God is not in the fixing you business. Are y'all with me today? The truth of the matter is we cannot be fixed. We're so broken, God can't even use our spare parts to fix and make up anything. So what God has to do is he has to restart over in us what he originally meant to do when he first created us. I wish I had help in here. God has to reproduce himself in us, and the only way he can do it, ladies and gentlemen, is to recreate in us a new heart and a new spirit. That's what we need to understand today because, see, some of us think that there's a little bit of good in us. Some of us think that God, yeah, he can use a little bit of this in me. No, what you don't understand is God can't use none of you. All he can do is put himself in you and then he can use you to glorify himself. Oh, you don't believe that. You don't believe that. That's why we need to go to the word. Second Corinthians chapter five. What book did I say everybody? Second Corinthians chapter five and verse number 17. The Bible says this. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature or what everybody a new creature, a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Notice with me Colossians chapter 1 and verse 27. What book did I say, everybody? Colossians chapter 1 and verse 27 says this, to whom God would make known the riches of his glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of all glory. Christ in you, the hope of all glory. Come on, say amen. Galatians chapter 2 and verse number 20. Galatians chapter 2 and verse number 20 says this. I am crucified with Christ. That means I'm dead. Come on, say amen. I am crucified with Christ. Yet nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth where everybody in me and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and who gave himself for me. Hallelujah. Paul said, I don't even live anymore. 
I don't even respect who I am anymore because who I am is worthless. I'm nothing without him. Oh, but with him, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Can you say amen this morning? I'm not here to dumb you down. I'm here to build you up. Come on, say amen. I want you to know that with Christ, everything is possible. But without him, nothing can be done. And many of us don't understand that we don't believe that we're that lost. We don't really know what's on the inside of us. Are y'all with me? But saints of God, I want you to know that what's happening right now is God is letting the pressure come on the world. You know why? Because when pressure comes, you find out what's on the inside. When, 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 when the squeezing time comes, are y'all with me? That's when you find out what kind of real character you have. And you will never know who you really are until you get your head beating up against a wall and you'll find out what's really on the inside of you. And that's when you'll be broken and say, God, take me over. Do something in me that only you can do. Somebody say hallelujah today. God is in the reproducing business. You see, God has to recreate us. He's got to remake us in his image. But he can only do that when we submit to him. When we come to Jesus, we are totally changed and we no longer hold on to who we were. On Wednesday, June 17th, a 20-year-old Dylan Roof walked in to a prayer meeting at a historically black church and unceremoniously took the lives of nine African-American worshipers. After being caught, though, during his arraignment hearing, the judge allowed for the families of the victims to speak. Every last one of the family members represented expressed their deep sadness, their grief, and their anger at the evil that the young Dylan had perpetrated on their loved ones. And yet, every last one of them stated that they had prayed for Dylan. Forgiving him of his sin against them, they said, we hope and we pray that you will receive the gospel of Jesus Christ so that you and your soul can be saved. Saints of God, I want you to know that that was not human beings talking. That was the spirit of the living God inside of those people. Are y'all listening to what I'm saying to you? Because when somebody does something like that, takes away a family member of yours that you've loved for a long time, the only thing in a human heart that can come up and rise up is revenge. But it takes a deep-seated faith in Christ to be able to say, God, help thou my unbelief. I believe, Lord, but help my unbelief. I want to take him out, God. I want him to die a worse death than they died. But God, I know that your love can reach down to the depths of the deepest sea. Come on, say amen. And they said, God, keep his soul. God, bless him. Even though he's hurt us, bless him. That's God. Because God says, love your enemies. Are you with me today? Love the person who hates your guts. Can you do that? I submit to you, we can't. Come on, say amen. I submit to you that it takes a divine power living on the inside to be changed from the inside out. When I saw those people, I said, Lord, have mercy, God. Thank you for your love that people can give grace in replacement of evil. Thank God for his grace. Come on, say amen. Amen. Saints of God, we've got to be changed from the inside out. We've got to be people who understand what forgiveness is. Are y'all with me today? 
But one thing that amazes me about this story is that Peter is like a lot of us. If you look in Matthew chapter 18, starting at verse 21, the Bible says that Peter came to Jesus with a question that's on most of our lips in the church. Lord, I got a question for you. How many times do I have to forgive my brother? I know you all about this nice little, nice, pretty, compassionate, loving kindness. Listen, I, I, I'm with that. We, we can deal with that. But how many times do I have to be like that? How many times do I have to forgive my brother or my sister? Lord, have mercy. Peter wanted to know, how long am I supposed to be like you? Am I right about it? How long am I supposed to act like you, Jesus? Notice I use the word act. Are y'all with me today? Because I can act for a long time in the church. Oh, y'all don't want to hear this. Y'all don't want to hear this. See, the word Pharisee literally means hypocrite, which literally means play actors. And you looking at the best play actor right in front of you right now. Oh, I know how to play the game. I know how to look good. I know how to look like I had Venice. I grew up in this thing. Are y'all with me today? I was raised at Venice from the ground up. I know how to put on a nice suit, look cute, look nice, look clean, and look like I love Jesus from the bottom of my heart. Are y'all with me today? But I also know how to go outside the doors and talk about every last one of you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know how to do that too. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm just keeping it real. Y'all don't want to keep it real. You might as well go to another church because we're keeping it real today. See, I know how to play the game for a little while. But all of us have a level that we ain't willing to go past. <laughs> Are y'all with me today? All of us have a standard by which we're not going to go past. Even when we get married, we're like, oh, I love him, Lord. I love him. But if he does that. Oh, it got quiet in here now. It got quiet in here now. If she does that, if she crosses that line with me, she better not even think about going that far with me. Because if she does, hey, the D word is right on line. I'm up out of here. Are y'all with me today? See, this is the thing. If you are asking God, how far are you going to allow me to take it? How long do I have to live like this in order to receive your gifts? In order for me to be saved, God, how much more mess do I have to take from my children, from my wife, from my uncles, from my cousins, from my church? How long do I have to forgive? How many times? And see, in the ancient rabbinical standard, it was considered perfect to do it three times. How many times, everybody? Three times. You forgive your brother three times for the same thing, and that's all you had to do. And you ready for translation, sis. You with me? So Peter said, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do, I'm, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna double that. Come on, say amen. Six times, and then I'm gonna do you one better. I'll give you one on top of that. Seven with a cherry on top. Seven times, God. Perfect number. Seven times. I know Jesus is going to say, yeah, that's enough. That's enough. Seven times, Jesus. Will that do it? Will that get me in the pearly gates? Will that get me past my own sin? Will that cover my mess? Will that pay my sin debt? Are y'all with me today? We're talking about grace. What are we talking about? We're talking about grace. Notice, Peter ain't talking about grace at all. He's talking about works. Notice, 
his question is focused on him and not the person to be forgiven. It's about him. Are y'all with me today? He could care less about whoever he's talking about. He's saying, how long do I have to act the part before I get what I really want? Lord have mercy. I know I'm talking to somebody here because I'm talking to me. Come on, say amen. Saints of God, Jesus replied, no, Peter. <laughs> Not seven. Seventy times seven. Lord have mercy. And the Pharisees in here are calculating right now. Let's see, 70 times seven. That's four, 49, four to carry the zero, 400, 490, 490 times. No, 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 no. That's not what Jesus is saying. Jesus is trying to tell Peter something that he's trying to tell all of us here today. Jesus is saying, you've got to be a person of forgiveness. You've got to live this thing. It's not something that you can put on like a cheap suit and walk to church and look cute and pretty in front of people. No, no. You've got to live this life. You've got to be a person of forgiveness. But how can I do that, Lord? How can I do that? How can I live a life of forgiveness? Well, Jesus does what he loves to do. He tells us a little story. Come on, say amen. He tells us that there was a king in a certain kingdom. And he said, this kingdom is just like the kingdom of heaven. I love Jesus. He said there was a king and he decided to take account of all of his finances. And he found one account that seemed to be out of balance. And so he called the person who was over that account. Hello, somebody. And brought them in for a reckoning. That's called judgment. Amen. Brought him in and he came in and he said, listen, <laughs> we found out that you have lost 10,000 talents. Where's our money? Now, ladies and gentlemen, 10,000 talents, if we calculate it into today's money, are you with me? It's equivalent to somewhere in the neighborhood. It really doesn't matter, but I'll just give you a figure. It's somewhere in the neighborhood of $382 billion. Not million. I didn't say M. I said B. Billion. Are y'all with me today? Could run the United States for years. Billion dollars. One servant owes $382 billion to the king. Lord have mercy. And so the king does what every other kingdom in the world does. He applies the law. The law says you owe, so you got to go. He orders for him, his wife, his children, his house, his cousin Ray Ray and Pookie and all the rest of them. Y'all with me? All y'all going into slavery. Sell all of them. Lord have mercy. That's the law. Are y'all with me today? Law says you got, to go, you got to be a slave. Law says you are indebted and there's no way you can get out of it. So you must live a life of slavery. Are you listening to what I'm saying to you today? So the man does what many of us do. He drops to his knees, begins to importune the king. Are y'all with me today? And says, Lord, Lord, please watch this now. He doesn't say, forgive me. What's he say, saints of God? What's he say? Have mercy on me by giving me more time so that I can do what I need to do to do what, everybody? To pay back everything. Are y'all with me today? He's telling the king, this is the kind of relationship I want to have with you. 
I want to pay you back. Just give me mercy. Just give me time. I'll pay you back. And ladies and gentlemen, Christians today are in the same boat. They've got the same deal with God. They're telling God every single day. God is trying to give them grace, and they're trying to give God works. I'm talking about in the Adventist church. They're still trying to pay God back for what they've done, trying to pay God back for their lifestyle of sinfulness before they came to Christ. Are y'all with me today? And they live a life of, 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 of anguish and pain because they know they'll never get the debt off their record. They constantly owe God, constantly owe God, they constantly owe God, and they never can pay him enough. And the king understands his heart. Y'all with me? He says, you know what? I don't want you to live that kind of life because that's not the kind of kingdom that I want. He says, I'll tell you what. I'm going to forgive you of all your debt." <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, see, you don't understand because you don't owe nobody $382 billion. See, you don't understand. That's, what, that's the problem. But if you owe anybody a more than a million dollars and you make $10,000 every two years, <laughs> I wish I had help in here. Then you understand what it means to be forgiven of what you've gone. Forgiven of what you've accumulated. Forgiven of what you've done against the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. When the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords declares in his throne room, forgiven, clean the slate. Wipe it out and let him go free. The Bible says literally in Matthew chapter 18 that the king loosed him and set him free. He loosed him. Somebody say loosed. Ooh, if you know what it means to be loosed, the only way you would know is if you understand what it means to be bound. To be bound up in your own sinfulness, bound up in your own guilt and shame, bound up in your own mess. That's what Jesus does. He sets us free from that guilt, free from that shame. He lets us know you don't have to do anything because I've done it all for you. Hallelujah. I've given it all. Take him off the books. And see, this is the picture of true forgiveness. True forgiveness is when the person who forgives incurs the debt of the debtor. It is a decision that has to be made. Are y'all with me today? I incur your debt. You don't pay me back anything. That is is forgiveness and it's something that's offensive to the worldly mind it doesn't make sense to us how can you let somebody who did something so bad go free it sounds good on paper but when it's happening in your life are y'all with me today some young buck decides he wants your car. And he goes out there and he takes your car. Y'all with me today? Young man, and he just all bold and loud, cussing folk out. Are y'all with me today? And they finally catch him and they bring him to court and they say, you need to come to court and tell us, are you going to press charges? Are you going to press charges? He need to learn. Boy, it got quiet in here. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm going to come down your lane in a minute. I already know. How can you let him go? Don't you see what he's done? It's so offensive to our minds because everything we think about is merit for favor. Merit for favor. Merit for favor. I've got to be worthy in order to receive. God says you have to be unworthy in order to receive. You believe that? He says, listen, if you don't consider yourself unworthy, you can't receive the gift. <laughs> Lord have mercy. 
because you already have what you're looking for, which is your own self-righteousness. So he forgives the man everything. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know about you, but if I was forgiven for $382 billion debt, I don't know about you, but I might put on some Jason Nelson on the radio. Come on, say amen. I might put on some William McDowell, some praise and worship. Come on, say amen. And I might be praising God all the way back home. Come on, say amen. Thank you, Jesus. I might even put on some old Fred Hammond up in here. I might even put on, oh, help me, Jesus. I might even put on some Andre Crouch or some old, are y'all with me today? Some old gospel Hawkins family. I don't know. I'd put on something that's praising God and I would be delivered. I would be living the delivered life. I would be high on the gospel horse. I would be praising God, but this young man is not praising God. He's been to church. He's seen the king. He's been in the courtroom, and he's been forgiven of all his debt, and he still won't praise God. Instead, the Bible says, this same servant, this same one, it makes sure that you know it's the same person. The self-same one. Come are y'all with me today? So you, no excuses and you're not going to get it wrong. It's the same one that was forgiven. Come on, say amen. He goes out. He leaves Central Church on July 4th after that great sermon by Pastor Michael Hayes. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Don't, don't go get it. Just say hallelujah. Just say hallelujah. We're going to move on. After that great sermon, he walks outside looking for his homie. Matter of fact, no, he's waiting outside the church for his brother to come out. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. Have you ever had somebody give you the devil after church? You had a good time blessing the Lord, and you walk outside the threshold of the church, and they're just giving you all that you can receive. Has that ever happened to you? It's happened to me several times. Person walks outside the church. They're praising God. This man is sick. He's been forgiven for $382 billion. And he looks the guy in the eye and says, come here. Bible says he grabs him by the scruff of the neck. He's choking the man. And says, where's my money? Now I ask you, is that grace or is that law? I'm asking you, I'm asking you, is that law or is that grace? Here's a man who has received grace but in response, he gives. He grabs him by the scruff of the neck. Where's your money? The Bible says the man owed him, what is it, 10 pence, 100 pence? That is equivalent to about $10,000 in today's money. What did you say, my brother? 100 pence. You said, how, what did you say? That's it. That is a lot. Amen. If you owe me 10 grand, you're going to be knowing me real good. <laughs> uh, am I right or am I wrong about it? Oh, I'm going to have your number on speed dial. Number one, number one, number one. Mm -hmm. Every other day, you're going to know me. Come on, say amen. We're going to pray about it. We're going to pray about this thing. $10,000? And so my point here is this. This is not an insignificant debt. Are y'all listening to me? Then? Yeah. Ten grand is some money. Amen. Hallelujah. That's a new used car. 
<laughs> New to me. Come on, say amen. Yeah, yeah. You, are you kidding me? Ten grand? That's some money. Come on, say amen. I can put that in the bank and I can rest for a little while. I can take a little break. I can take a sick day or, so, or two. Ten thousand dollars? Imagine you take off work. Your friend needs you to do some carpentry work. And you take off work and you go and work at his house. You build him an extra partition in his house. Takes you four and a half months. $10,000 worth. Are y'all with me? And then you get done and you say, brother, all right, man, how you liking the house? Oh, man, that's just beautiful, man, beautiful. Okay, well, what can we do? Well, man, uh, you know, I, I forgot to tell you, man, I, I really didn't have that money, but I, I'm going to hook you up. I'm going to hook you up. Are y'all with me? Okay, okay, well, let's, let's, I'll tell you what, let's do an installment plan, installment plan. We'll just do, you know, $500 a month or $250 a month or whatever you can afford. Okay, okay, okay. Sign the papers, whatever it is need to be done. After about six months, no payments. You come back over brother's house. You see a brand new Lexus in his driveway. Y'all with me? <laughs> yo, 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 Don, what's up, baby? <laughs> how you doing, man? Hey, man, how you doing? Yo, I noticed that, uh, you know, you got a new car out of Oh, man, isn't that awesome, man? Yo, check this out. I got a deal, man. It was only 45 grand. It's usually $60,000. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm keeping it real. Come on, say amen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, you, in your mind, are like, <laughs> 60, 50,000, 45,000. Uh, there's a 10,000 in there somewhere. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And see, it's not even about the money. I took time out of my life. Time after being out with my wife and my kids. Four months of work for you. You can't even pay me back for that. Are you with me today? It's not insignificant. And that's the way it is in the church. When people do you wrong, it's not insignificant. When people backbite you and talk about you behind your back, it's not insignificant. When people dog out your kids in church, it's not insignificant. Are you with me today? When people show you law instead of grace in the church, it's not insignificant. When people refuse to love you for who you are in the church, it is not insignificant. It's painful. And it hurts you to the core. And if anybody in here knows what I'm talking about, just lift your hand and move on. Just lift your hand. I know what you're talking about, preacher. I know what you're talking about. Folk won't love you, won't listen to you, but they sit up there and act like they're praising God all day and all night. Can't even remember your name until something bad happens. Then they know you intimately suddenly. Are y'all with me today? I'm talking about in the church. I ain't talking about in the world. I'm talking about in the church. I've got two pastor friends who are on the cutting edge of reaching people for Christ. Y'all with me? They've done some, some uh, uh, inspirational, powerful, Holy Ghost-filled things. But saints of God, folk in the church, in the church, where everybody? Have attacked them to the core. Called them everything, literally, but a son of God. It's painful to be called a heretic and you're a preacher in the Adventist church. Are y'all listening to me? It's not insignificant when people do you wrong. But here's the thing. It becomes insignificant when you remember what God did for you. Are, are you with me? Are you with me? Are you with me? Can, can you follow that line of reasoning? See, $10,000 is a lot of money. That's a lot of money. But $382 billion? That's like a world economy. By comparison, not even close. Are you right? Are, am I right about that? See, but the issue is... 
help me, help me preach this, Lord. The issue is you have to know that you've been forgiven of that debt. Most people don't know that, even though they claim they do. Listen to me very carefully. When you understand God's grace, there is no way that you can look at somebody else and treat them with disrespect and ill repute. It's impossible. It's impossible to know the grace of God and treat somebody else as though they're the worst sinner in the world. You know why? Because if God has truly given his grace to you, you know, like Paul says, I'm the worst sinner up in here. It's impossible to mistreat somebody else. But because we really haven't received his grace, See, what happened with this young man is he never changed his original plan with the king. What did he tell the king? He told the king, king, I'm going to pay you everything. I'm going to pay it all. And this is what he does. Watch me now. Watch me now. He leaves the king's courtroom with the sense, the mindset that the king has given him time to pay back. Are y'all with me? That's, 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 in his mind, that's what grace is. Are, are, are you with me? So he leaves the courtroom and he says, the re- this is how we do. The reason why I'm messing over the king is because somebody is messing over. Are you with me? Why does he target his brother immediately after leaving the king? Because his mindset is the reason why I cheated the king out of his money is because I've been cheated out of my money. Are y'all with me today? In other words, it's not my fault. It's, and I'm going to make sure that I get this thing straight. Are y'all with me? Does that make sense to you? That's why people can go to church and leave the church hating their brother even more, hating their sister even more, because they think it's about a life of comparison of who's closer to God. Are y'all with me today? He leaves and goes directly after his brother and asks him to give him the money. Now, the guy does exactly what he did before the king. So when he sees the guy worshiping him like he was worshiping the king earlier, he figures he was being fake just like I was being fake with the king. That ain't real worship. He fake just like I am. He gonna give me my money. (laughs) Boy, it's quiet in here. And what he does, watch this. He says, I'm going to put you in prison. Until you've paid me all. Question. How am I supposed to pay you back if I'm in prison? How how, how can I pay you back if I'm in prison? I can't. And that's the point. And that's how we do in the church. We put people in spiritual prisons. You know the kind of prisons I'm talking about, right? You know the prison of, I ain't talking to you no more. You, you know that prison? You ever been in that prison? You, you ain't my friend no more because of what you did to me. We on the board, we in the we elders on the board, but I, I can't talk to him. Pastor, don't put me with him. I can't be prayer partners with him because I, I can't be his friend no more because of what he did to me. That's called the prison of silence. Are y'all with me today? See, I'm not even going to let you pay me back. 
I don't want to forgive you because really I have earned credit by making you the brunt of my faults and my failures. See, I feel good by making you look bad. Pastor, you don't know what she did to me. You don't understand what she took me through. You, you don't know. Now, this is a long, this is before you came, Pastor, but, you know, 10 years ago, 10 years ago, she was ugly towards me, Pastor. You just don't know. You just don't know. And we can't work together as a church. We can't focus on reaching people for Christ because we're too busy hating on one another. And we've lost the sight of God's grace. We put them in all kinds of prisons. Are y'all with me? The prison of, I ain't never going to let you live it down. You came from the ghetto, you always going to be from the ghetto. Are y'all with me? Look at him. Look at the way he dressed. Look at how he is. Uh -huh. That's how they are. You know, that's how all of them are. That's a prison. And we'll never let them pay the debt because we don't want them to. So here's the thing. The fellow servants of the king see what's happening and they go back and they tell the king. Are you with me? They say, king, <laughs> you know that brother you let go? <laughs> a few months ago? Well, let me tell you what he was doing. Those are the angels. Are y'all with me? They're recording everything we do. Are y'all listening to what I'm saying? Because see, <laughs> grace has to be reflected in our life. It's not just something that we say. It's got to be something that we are. And it's revealed in how we treat one another. So they go back to the king and they say, king, this is what's happening. The king says, bring him back up in here. They bring him back up in there under arrest. Now here's the question. Why is he under arrest? Did he break any laws? Did he break any civil laws? Did he steal from anybody? Did he rob anybody? Did he kill anybody? Are y'all with me? He didn't do any of that. But he broke the spiritual law of grace. Are you listening to me? He didn't break any civil laws. He broke the spiritual law of grace that permeates the kingdom of glory. And watch this. Watch what the king says here. Watch what the king says here. <clears throat> Notice, it says, then the Lord, verse 32, then his Lord, after he had called him, said unto him, O thou, what kind of servant, everybody? <laughs> Wicked servant. I forgave thee how much? All debt. Why? Because you asked me to. Somebody say amen. amen. Thank God that's all we got to do is ask. All we have to do is just desire for God to forgive us, and he will do it. Is that a blessing? Come on, say amen. I did it simply because that's what you wanted me to do. We've got to let God know, God, please forgive me. That's what I need. I did it for you. Notice verse 38, 33, excuse me. Shouldest not thou also have have had what everybody compassion for your brother what is the king saying there he's saying i did it for you shouldn't you doesn't it just make sense you see what i'm saying he's listen he's saying can't you just follow my lead can't you just follow behind my example? 
Can't you be more like me? And that's what the whole text is about, saints. That's what this life is about, saints. This life is about God wanting us to become like him. Not more like us. <laughs> he wants us to be like him. Now, that's a tall order, is it not? How many of you think you can become like God on your own power? No, we can't. And the Bible says that he sent the man to punishment. Now, watch this now. The man is not punished for what he did recently, but he's actually punished to pay for his sins of the past. Do you see that? Watch this, watch this. And his Lord, the number, verse 34, and his Lord was wroth. His Lord was what, everybody? Wroth. He was angry. You know what makes God angry? When we mistreat each other in the church. That's what makes him mad. When we mistreat his children in the church. He says in this same pericope of text, Matthew 18, that uh, 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 you know, stumbling blocks will come, but woe unto them who bring them. He says, you better be careful. If you cause my child to stumble, it would be better for you to have a chain of bricks around your neck and be thrown into the sea than to you to come into my courtroom and receive my retribution. God doesn't like when we mistreat each other. Are you with me? So watch this. And he delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was what everybody? Do unto him. You see, he's paying for his past debt. But I thought he was forgiven of. You see, his life has proven that he never really did receive forgiveness. Are you hearing me today? And how is it proven? It's proven by how we treat one another. Somebody asks, well, how do I know I'm saved? How do I know? How do I have a, 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 a true assurance of my salvation? Can I tell you today? Can I tell you today? 1 John 4 and verse 11 says, Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. Freely you have received, freely give. Are y'all with me today? How do we know that the love of God is in us when we have love one for another? How will you be able to tell who are the disciples of Christ? How can they tell you are my disciples? By the love that you have for one another. That's what proves whether or not God's grace has lived in your life. How you treat each other. That's the proof of God. So God, what's the problem? The problem is, Mike, you don't ask. The problem is, too many are too proud to ask. They're too proud, Mike. They're too proud. And you're too proud too, Michael, because you don't want to admit that you are just as bad as everybody else. I don't know about you, but I'm done pretending. I'm done. I can't do it anymore. I can't do it for you, and I can't do it for me. I'm the worst sinner in here, no doubt about it. But you know what? The blood of Christ covers me. And that's all that makes the difference in the world. If you knew the real me, you'd understand what I'm talking about. That's a bad brother right there. And not bad meaning good. I mean bad meaning bad. His life is jacked up. But for grace. <laughs> See, when I finally hit rock bottom, are y'all with me today? 
And I got to a point where I was ready to take my own life. Are you listening to what I'm saying to you? And I said, God, if you don't do something, I'm cutting this thing out right here, right now. Now, you, you a bad God. You better do something because I'm ready to cut it off right here. That's right. I got mad at God. And you know what? God didn't kill me. <laughs> God didn't snap me out. He didn't stomp on me. You know what he did? He came to me in a small, still voice. And he said, Michael, <laughs> you know the hell you've been living in for the last X amount of years? Michael, I've been living in it with you. <laughs> you just haven't recognized me. I've been right here with you. I took you through this hell, Mike. That's the only reason why you're still here. <laughs> Listen, saints. Listen, I'm not telling you something that somebody just told me and I'm just regurgitating it. I'm telling you what I know. His grace is the only thing that will save you. His love is the only thing that will do it. Nothing else will do it. He says, I can't forgive you until you've forgiven your brother from your heart. I don't know about you, but I can't do it from my heart. I've got to have a new heart. Lord created me a clean heart. Renew in me a righteous spirit, David said. Why? Because you're the only one who can do it. I can't love like you need me to love, God. I've tried. I can't do it. But thank God he can. Thank God he already did. When you know the grace of God, when you feel his grace in your life, I don't care where you are in your life, it changes you from the inside out. You cannot be the same. And I want you to know, saints, that love is available right here, right now. It's available right here, right now. That power is available right here, right now. God says, you don't have to do it because I've already done it for you. I'm just asking you to submit and let me give you my grace. And I don't know who you are, man or woman, boy or girl. I don't know where you're from. I don't know anything about your background. But I know one thing. All of us are living in hell on earth. This world is full of mess. And stress is pressing all of us together. And if we don't receive God's grace, we're going to be shown for who we really are on the inside. I don't know about you, but my sins are forgiven. I let them go because God asked me to do it. Isn't that something? He asks you to give him your sin. What a great God. Give me your debt, Mike. I'll take it. I said, God, take it. And he said, Mike, Listen to me. Don't ever forget to tell somebody what I've done for you. Are y'all with me today? That's what he told me. He said, you cannot stand up before people and act like you've been clean all your life. No, I have not. But I know one thing. Somebody who I know, my homeboy, my partner in, are y'all with me today? My partner in this thing. He has been clean all his life. He's been through everything that I've been through, and he never, ever, ever messed up. That's why I need his life, and I give him mine. It's a transition. It's a spiritual exchange. And if you want to be the person who receives that exchange today, I want you to come forward right now. I want to pray for you, whoever you are, whoever you are. You want to say, God, I want to trade my life for yours. I want to trade my life for yours. 
I'm done pretending. I'm done complaining about other people and them making me do this and that. No, no, no. It was me, God. It was me. But you know what, God? I'm going to receive your grace today because you said if I declare you before others, you would declare my name before your Father in heaven. And I'm going to declare, God, how you saved me. I was unworthy. I was below the lowest of the low, but you lifted me up. Your grace. There's a story in the Bible. It's the story of the woman with the issue of blood. You ever heard that story before? Bible says she had that thing for years and what she learned how to do saints what she learned how to do she learned how to pretend and cover it up and act like she didn't have that issue are y'all with me so much so that she was able to mingle mingle among the crowd when Jesus came around but she went she knew she had that issue I wish I had help in here she knew she had that issue she said if I can just touch the hem of his garment I know he'll make me whole and she reached through the crowd. Nobody knew she had that issue. And she reached through the crowd. She grabbed the hem, just touched it just barely. And the Bible says instantly, instantly she was made whole. Pow! But it's not over there. The Bible says that she walked away. She Listen, she wanted to walk away covered in her own clothes. She wanted to walk away and act like she never had that issue. And Jesus said, no, no, somebody has touched me. And I will not let them go without declaring what I have done for them. No way. They will declare my name. They will make witness to my glory. They will show up and reveal how I saved them and how I changed them. The disciples lost their mind. Everybody touching you. No, 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 no. I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about spiritually grabbed a hold to my grace. And they suck some life out of me. Ain't no way. No. So they going to reveal my life is in them. And in order for her to be fully made whole, she had to declare what God had done for her. And saints, there's some people in here who have not declared what God has done for them. God has blessed you. He's covered you. He's covered up some sin in your life. He's covered up some mess in your life. And you've been afraid to declare what God has done. Let me tell you something. That this is the time right now. You need to declare what God has done for you. Because people need to know that you can be saved. Doing whatever dirt you were in. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? You got to open your mouth and let folk know, listen, man, I was messed up. You just don't know. I was so toe up from the floor up. But you know what? When God came, I don't even know how he did it. I just know that he changed my life and he can do it for you. I promise you he can do it for you. That's the kind of witness we need today. In these last days, we need some real folk. You hearing me today? These young people, they don't even want to hear anything you got to say unless you're keeping it real. You got to keep it real with them and let them know where you've been. Come on, say amen. So I want to pray for you right now that the Spirit of God rests heavily upon your hearts. Lord, I pray in the Spirit of God, in the name of Jesus Christ, that, Father, you would hold to your promise. You declared in your word, God, that if we would humble ourselves and if we would ask for the Spirit of the living God, that you would fall fresh on us. That was what you said. So I'm praying your own word back to you. And I'm asking you, Lord, to fulfill your word this morning. Do what only you, the great and marvelous God of the universe, can do. And pour your life into each and every individual standing right in front of me right now. They're standing declaring, God, I'm done pretending. 
They're standing declaring, God, I'm finished play acting. They're standing declaring, God, I'm the worst sinner. Lord, fill me with your life. Please, God, and then cover me with your blood. Let your righteousness be mine. Let my sin be given unto you and cleanse me from everything on the inside to the outside. Oh, God, make this spiritual exchange today, not because of Pastor Michael Hayes, not because of a great sermon, but because your word is real. It's real. Do it, God, in the name of Jesus. Make that switcheroo in our lives. Give me your life, God, and I'll give you mine. And Lord, we will never be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation. To both the Jew and the Greek. To the high, to the low. To the rich, to the broke. To everybody. It is the word of the living God. It's alive and it's powerful. And we thank you God for your grace something that we could never earn. Thank you, God, for your grace. Something that we could never attain to. Thank you, God, for your grace. For giving us what we need most. Forgiveness. Forgive me, God, for hating my brother. Forgive me, God, for hating on my sister. Forgive me, God, for mistreating my own children. Forgive me, God, for hating my mother and father. They treated me wrong, but God, I treated them wrong back. Forgive me, God. And give me the spirit of love. Divine, unadulterated love that Lord loves in spite of what others do for me. Lord, I don't want to love people because they can love me back. I want to love people because you first loved me. I want to show people that there is a love that is a stalwart foundation that will not move. It will stay present all the time. Even when we're wrong, your love is still there. And God, I know right now as I stand here, as sure as I stand here, we're going to fall and stumble when we leave this church. We're going to make mistakes. We're, we're going to do things that we didn't imagine we would do. But God, just let that remind us of how our need for you is so present and let it drive us back to your cross. Put us back on our knees when we mess up. And help us to call on the name of Jesus to change us and form us and mold us and shape us like clay into his image. So that when others see me, they don't see Michael, they see Christ. Christ in me, the hope of all glory. God, do this because your word declares you would. But do it most of all because you love us and you care. We desire it, God. We desire you to change us. And we thank you for doing it. Because your word declares if we ask, you will give it. You've already done it. We declare it already done in the spirit, in the name of Jesus. We declare that the word of God is perfect. And we receive your life in exchange for ours, we thank you, God, for what you've already done. Now, Lord, bless us. And let us bless others through your presence in our lives. We thank you, God, in Jesus' precious name. Let everyone say amen and amen. Hug the person next to you and tell them God loves you, and so do I. God loves you, and so do I.